Why hello everybody, this is Lotus Animations, and today I'm going to teach you how to liven up your scene by adding some grass, some falling leaves, and running water. Um, this will bring a still image into a live animation really well without having to do a whole lot of work. And uh, this can all be achieved by particle systems and modifiers. So to start things off, we're going to do the grass because... I mean, this looks okay, but it could do with just a little bit of something going on in these areas. Um, and it'll liven things up a lot. So what we're going to do is we're going to make us a little tuft of grass. So we're going to grab a cube, and we're just going to make the... Oh, I got this enabled proportional editing we're just going to make really simple tufts of grass let's scale that along the z-axis yeah so we're going to do that and i'm going to duplicate it three times Oop. and just make these little like tri tufts I keep saying tufts, I don't really know what else to call them. Um, but yeah, just something like that. Maybe scale them a little bit to give a little bit of uh, differentiation to it. You don't want them to look exactly the same. Yeah, that looks good. Um, let's add a quick material to this. Just a little grassy material. Yeah, that works. Make these visible in the viewport. Sure. Actually, hmm, I, it's a fall scene. Grass needs to be a little bit more fall color. All right. So now that we have these little tufts of grass, just uh, select all of them by shift clicking and hit Control G to make a group. And I remembers my group from last time. That should be, it'll probably be group for you. Just name it grass if you want to. If you don't want to, it's not a big deal. Okay, so you could sit here and place this grass and, and scale it. And that would take forever, years, if you wanted to do it. But um, I don't, I'm lazy. So what I'm going to do is take this bottom ground plane, hit new under the particle systems tab, and we're going to let particle systems grow our grass for us. So what we're going to do is hit hair, because we want this stuff, but instead of this stuff, we're going to go to group and select our grass. Ooh. Grass? Ah. Apparently it's grass of one now because I got all jacked up. Anyway, it's just going to be group for you or whatever it is. Um, and now you can see our grass is kind of sideways. So what we're going to do is hit rotation here. This is a quick, easy way to fix this. And then it realizes what it is in comparison to your original grass. There we go. Now we got grass all up everywhere. And so we're going to go back here. Um, size is quite big. I'm gonna bring that down. Yeah, I'm good with that. Uh, if you do random, that's this is gonna be the largest the grass can be, and random makes it anywhere below. So, um, as you can see, it doesn't, it only shrinks, doesn't grow, which is kind of nice. Um, a little bit of random ain't bad, but. But now you can see that our grass is growing in places that it really shouldn't, like in our trail and in the water, which is not correct. So a way to fix that is to do a vertex group, which I already have two here, but we're going to go fresh. And um, then if you go to our particle systems tab, you'll see that there's a vertex group here and density. So if we select that, 
nothing changes. But if we go tab on our ground plane, go into weight paint, and paint, it only puts grass where there's weight. So now you can put grass wherever you want and only where you want by painting it on to the plane, which is really cool. As you can see, I kind of got it in where exactly I told it not to be. So I'll have to get rid of that. But now, oop, getting all excited. We have grass only where we want it, livening up our scene. I think there's a little bit too much grass. Uh, I only want a little bit, so you can change that here by bringing it down to however much you want. 200 is probably good with me. I'm happy enough with that. So there's a quick way to add grass. Um, this application can be used for much more than low poly, but there's a quick way to do it in low poly. Um, now it's to the falling leaves, which are really easy. So um, if we want leaves to fall, we need leaves and the correct color. So what I'm going to do is add a cube. And then I'm going to duplicate it two times. So I have three cubes because I have three colors here, orange, red, and yellow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find those colors, orange, uh, yellow, got to scroll through all of my colors, and red. There we go. So I, it's going to be a particle system again, but instead of doing a particle system for each tree, what I'm going to do to speed up the process is... I'm going to join all of these into a single mesh, which you probably don't normally want to do, but for this situation it works. So I selected all of them, and now I'm going to hit Control J, and now they're all one. And I'm going to do that for each of the colors. There we go. So now we have all of them into three separate things. And we're going to make a particle system. This time, instead of doing group, we're going to do object. And then select, oh, let's name these. Cursor to center. That bothers me a lot for some reason. Um, so this will be leaf one. Leaf 2 and Leaf 3. So select, just type this in, Leaf 1. Now if we hit play, we got really weird exploding-esque raindrop, I don't even know how to describe that, leaves. So we're gonna fix that, make it more lifelike by first changing the um, field weights and actually cheating and lowering the gravity. This makes them kind of fall a little bit slower. You can choose the how fluttery you'd like your leaves. But that's good, That that's nice, I like that. And then Leaves kind of catch air as they fall, making them kind of like swoop around and kind of drag in, in weird ways. So how I did that was physics and this brownian. If you scale that up a lot, you can't really see it and you don't want to see it too much. But if you crank this up, you'll definitely see what it's going to do. It makes it fly and they kind of like fire fly around they kind of go in all sorts of directions and so what you want to do is put that a reasonable amount um yeah that's good um and then also way too many leaves way too many leaves there we go and there 
th that's looking pretty good. Um, just nice fluttery leaves. Yeah, I like it. So what you're going to do is copy that for all of them. What particle system did this have? Three. We're going to steal that one. Yep. We're going to steal that one. And I know you're thinking, oh no, it's got orange leaves. That's awful. It's okay. Hit this little two. It makes it its own thing. And then you can just change this to... Um... Is it leaf two? No, leaf three. And you're gonna do the same thing with this one. New, select particle system three, hit the two, and select this one as leaf two apparently. And so now, all of your trees have little leaves falling. And it's beautiful. Ah, a nice autumn thing. Okay, so we've already got a lot more life on our scene. It's beautiful. Um, if you don't like them being perfectly square as they fall, um, you can do uh, rotation here. Just bump that up to random, and then they kind of fall at different angles. I'm going to go ahead and do that for all of them, because I personally like a little bit of variation in it. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, and now for the water, which is probably one of my favorite things about the animation. So, it's well known that if you want to have a little bit of funkiness going on in your plane, you can add a displace modifier. Whoa. Hit new. Hit this and go to clouds. Oh my. Bump that strength down a lot. And then also, I like to make it a little bit... Yeah, that's better. And then, let's bump the strength down a little bit more. Oh, wrong button. There we go. It's not bad. I'm gonna tweak it. It's all about tweaking. Good enough for this tutorial. Um, so, yeah, this makes it have a little light, a uh, little bit of life. Uh, light can reflect on it in different ways now. If I put it to rendered, oh, forgot it's still in it animating. If I put it in rendered, you can see it's got these bumps in it now, which is nice. It's what we want. But if we tried. I mean, we got all these leaves falling now. We don't want the river to be stagnant. And the quick way to go about that is very, very simple, actually. So, um, see this local? Put it to object. And then I like to add an empty. Plain axis is fine. I'm going to put it right here. Select this. Oh. Did I put this on object? Anyway. Select this. Put it to empty. Oh, I can't spell. Empty. And now, this is cool. If you select your empty. Oh. Goodness. It animates, but we need to fix our settings here. Had that way too hot on accident. Forgot when you put it to an empty, it changes a little bit. But now, if you drag that real slow, it actually has some, some direction to it. It slowly goes with the empty. And all you have to do now is, uh, gosh, that bothers me so much. Hit I, location, drag it over, 
I location. And now, when your animation's playing, ah, your river goes, your leaves are falling, and everything looks really good. Adds a lot to your render. So if you wanted to take your scene, liven it up a little bit, those are three quick ways to add a lot of life to a little amount of polys. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope that was helpful, and uh, see you next time. Bye.